Texture maps are one of those subjects which are extremely important in 3D design, but not many people go into much detail about it. So that's why I chose to make this video, which will go into the subject in a little bit more detail. I'm not gonna go into the very technical detail and tell you how light in 3D programs is calculated, but I will tell you what you need to know, at least from a beginner's standpoint, so that you have a leg to stand on when it comes to working or learning 3D design. First of all, what is a texture map? A texture map is a method of defining detail or color information. Texture maps are needed in order to assign textures to our 3D models. And the way they work is you have uh, one texture, which can have multiple maps associated to it. So in basic terms, the maps will just be stacked on top of each other to form the overall texture. And each texture map is just a different way of showing the texture and um, a different way of calculating it. There are many types of texture maps and some do very similar things. However, before we dive into explaining texture maps, we need to discuss something very important and that is PBR. So PBR stands for physically based rendering and is something that has been used for a very long time. Its main purpose is to simulate how light reacts with a 3D model in order to simulate real life materials. There are a couple of texture maps that are unique to PBR and also a number of maps that are unique to non-PBR, which is essentially the old, more redundant method of texture rendering. One other thing that I want to explain is the difference between color and grayscale images. So color images will just give you well, your simple color information, so uh, like red, blue, and green, etc. Grayscale images can only be black and white, and this is used for a lot of texture maps. And the reason for its use is because it is easier for a computer to read grayscale in some cases. So, for example, let's say we have a texture map which controls the roughness of our texture on a scale of 0 to 100, 0 being the shiniest and 100 being the roughest. With grayscale maps, pure black means zero and pure white means 100. So with a lot of texture maps, you'll get a blending of the grayscale values. So for example, you could have a part of the texture map which was uh, slightly white. So uh, in the case of a roughness texture map, that might be um, a bit shinier. Uh, so really in summary, grayscale is just an easy way for the computer to uh, calculate between two values and determine how much of one value is needed. I know it's not very simple, but it's just best to cover it in some detail before we move into texture maps. So first of all, let's start off with albedo and diffuse maps. Albedo is the PBR version of a color texture, and in some cases it's literally just called base color. Uh, and diffuse is the non-PBR version. These texture maps essentially give us the color information for the texture. So it just reads the different colors on the image and takes that into reference. Albedo maps are very similar to diffuse maps, with the only difference being that albedo textures do not have any light and shadow information. It is purely color information, which is very important for the PBR texture workflow because you can rely on other texture maps to give you more dynamic lighting information rather than the static lighting information that a diffuse texture map gives you. So for example, let's say you are making a game and you want to have a material which shows up in a dark room as well as a light room. Well, if you had a diffuse texture, the lighting information on that texture map is static, so it will always be there regardless. With the albedo map, you don't have to worry about this. So albedo maps tend to be a bit more flexible. But if there are cases where you wanted a bit more shadow information, for example, in like crevices, then you may want to use a diffuse map. Normal and bump maps allow us to fake depth and detail with our textures. It tries to calculate the way light would react with the surface of the material to create things like bumps and dents. But this does not add extra geometry to your model. This is purely just on the texture map. So this makes them extremely valuable when it comes to giving your 3D models extra detail without the cost of extra geometry and poly count in your scenes because it is literally just faking the detail for the texture map. Normal maps use RGB, so like red, green, blue channels to calculate all three dimensions. 
whereas bump maps are grayscale maps that only calculate up or down. Normal maps are typically much better for use in 3D design, so we tend not to use bump maps as much these days due to this. Roughness, also known as glossiness maps, basically tell our texture maps how rough or glossy it should be when exposed to lighting. And really, it is as simple as that. Roughness maps are grayscale maps, where white means rougher and black means glossier. Height maps are similar to normal maps, in the sense that they add extra detail and depth to your textures. The main difference with height maps is that, instead of faking bumps and dents like a normal map does, a height map will actually tessellate your mesh, which does increase your poly count. Tessellation is a whole other subject of its own, so I won't go into detail about it on this video. Height maps do not normally work straight out of the box. A lot of the time there is a bit more configuration you need to do to activate tessellation. But if you do activate it and use the height map, then you will get more geometry. In height maps, black areas are the lowest down and white areas are the highest, more elevated points of the texture. Height maps are also commonly used with landscapes as we can use the map to determine how we want our landscapes to look when imported into a program. Opacity is an extremely important texture map for 3D models that require transparency. So for example, if you are creating a window, you will probably want an opacity map for your texture. Another good use for it is if you want to make leaves for a tree. For your texture map, you can make the background black and the leaf itself white with black meaning transparent and white meaning opaque. So even though this is a square texture, if you were to apply this as an opacity map, the texture map will only take the white into consideration. Everything else will be invisible. Ambient occlusion, also known as AO, defines how light reacts with the texture. It helps provide subtle detail, but still noticeable enough to make things generally look better. It can darken small crevices, for example, to give it a more realistic look. And just quickly going back to the diffuse texture example. Diffuse textures are also known as a color and ambient occlusion combination texture. Because with diffuse textures, it can also fake a bit of ambient occlusion as well. So just before I end this video, I just want to quickly go into the Unreal Engine just to give you a few examples of the maps in a um, real-time scenario. So I'm just using this material here which has various different maps included on it. And here is the same material, but at different roughness values. So this here is roughness uh, of zero, I think. So basically it is very glossy. I mean, this is actually maximum glossiness. There's barely anything to the material. This is a roughness value kind of in the middle so you've got a bit of a shine to it, but you've still got the material showing. And then here is a roughness value of max. So there is no light reflecting off of this. And then over here is an example of opacity. So this is a high value of opacity. So you can see it's very transparent. And here is a very um, low value of transparency. So there's just, well, there's no transparency at all. So that is the general summary of texture maps. There are many other types of texture maps out there, but this video should have covered the most commonly used ones. And really, the idea of this video was just to give you a bit more of an understanding on texture maps, which will help you in the future. But anyway, I hope this video has helped you, and I will see you in the next video.